Hey, welcome back. I'm sorry we lost the sound with Phyllis, but we will have her come back on the show at a later date. We're going to move on to our next guest and stay on schedule because my Hong Kong buddy is here. I didn't know it. She didn't know it. But we both love Hong Kong and we're good friends now. Catherine is in the room. Hey, Catherine, how are you? Hey there. Great. Happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. Oh, my goodness. You look amazing. Thank you. Oh, you just came from a vacation. Were you on vacation? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in San Francisco, but it was work. <laughs> oh, it was work. But sometimes work. just moving around makes it feel like a vacation. You look amazing. I'm so glad you could be here. I We met at a couple of events now. We've run into each other. And you mentioned Hong Kong. And I said, hey, that was my second home for a while. I love Hong Kong. And we just started talking about that. How's things back in our second home of Hong Kong? Do you think you're going to get to go home again anytime soon? Oh, it's so great. I mean, it's such a small world. I could not believe that you and I had Hong Kong in common um, and that you were doing things at the Clearwater Bay Film Studio, I believe, which is literally like a stone's throw from our home in Clearwater Bay. Hello! I mean, it was just a matter of time before we were going to meet each other. <laughs> and see, if I had known, I would have come by and we would have had coffee there. You know, it's like... I would love that. I would we, love we that. We have to go meet across the pond that way, not yes. England, but Hong Kong, really soon, now that things seem to be getting better. I well, hope it's I getting hope better. so. I know that, you know, we each have a deep love in our heart for Hong Kong. And so a shout out to everybody there who's going through what feels like um, the worst wave, believe yeah. it or not, for Hong Kong is right now. And yeah. so just love and blessings and showering the community there with the support from us who feel a little bit further down the line um, because I guess that wave hit us faster since we didn't have the no COVID sort of COVID free policy that Hong Kong has had for so long. And it appeared that bless the, you know, that community, they had nothing until now. So it's rough yeah. right now. It's rough, but um, oh. Hong Kong's resilient and they're going to get through it. Yeah, you and I can sit here and talk about Hong Kong all day, but you know everybody else is going, yeah, but what else does she do? So let's <laughs> talk about what else you do. Because you know, other than traveling and, and looking amazing, you actually have programs. You are you know, a TEDx talk speaker multiple times. You're on stages. You've been on several television shows over the years. Let's talk about what your specialty is and why did you choose it? Thank you so much. So um, the Conscious Parenting Revolution is my passion and it's to really bring, well, I can, at least in my little way, the paradigm shift that I believe is necessary for parents to begin to see children as people too so that those behaviors that we want to come down hard on, we're able to see them instead as the tragic expression of an unmet need. And that paradigm shift to seeing those quote unquote bad behaviors as the expressions of unmet needs opens up so many possibilities for compassion and empathy that kind of spring forth when you see someone suffering rather than being badly behaved. So this is a, a real paradigm shift in parenting where the authoritarian behavioralist, because I said so, because I'm the mother, because I'm the father, because I have a position of power, you're supposed to do what I want. And that is an old paradigm. We know it activates retaliation, rebellion, and resistance, the proverbial three R's, mm -hmm. and that we then spend 75% of our time managing the reaction to how we dealt with the initial problem. And that reaction, one of my TED Talks is the rebellion is here, we created it, and we can solve it. And I focused on really looking at school shootings and mm. recognizing that a lot of those kids that are acting out in these massively tragic ways, we can trace back to not having been seen, heard, and understood from their perspective. And just that ability to see past the surface behaviors that are usually socially unacceptable and we want to judge them as horrible because they are horrible behaviors and mm -hmm. yet they are the expression of the unmet need and if we focus on the source as opposed to the presenting problem we move past the symptom into the source of the issue 
And that shift in consciousness is going to be the change. It's going to make the difference. So, you know, I, I come from old school. My parents raised me the old school way. I have grandchildren now that are two and a half, seven, and I believe 16 going on 30. He'll be 16 in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> how do I communicate with them? How do I get them to understand? Because I want to do it the way my parents did. Yeah. I told you to do it because I told you to do it. And that just doesn't work with my really grandchildren. Doesn't. My grandchildren look at me and go, yeah, no, that's not, that's not happening. It's not going to happen. Know, because how do, you, gonna... how do you do it when you're stuck in the old school way? How do you change your mind, change your life? Yeah. Well, here's an easy way. Would you ever say to me, do it because I said so. No. Of course not. So you would never do that with another adult. Right. So why do we think it's okay to do it with children? There's a power differential that's intrinsic. There's also a differential in terms of responsibility. Of course, as adults, there's a natural dependency that children will have on us. And we want them to be considerate and we want them to be thoughtful and we want them to have you know, good values and to live lives filled with good deeds and to be citizens that contribute back to the planet. And we have all of these beautiful ideas that we hope for them. And mm -hmm. we break down when we ourselves use a value that's inconsistent with the values that we want for them to have, which is not treating them with the same respect, consideration, and dialogue that we would with any other human being. If you wouldn't speak to me that way, you shouldn't speak to them that way. If you wouldn't speak to your mother that way, then why would you speak to a child that way? The minute we change our perspective and look at children as people too, what would naturally flow forth from us and how we would communicate will be different. I remember my daughter at five years old saying to me, mom, that lady would never have spoken to you that way. And it was mm. such an extraordinary realization on her part that there was something about how that woman was communicating with her that indicated that she was looking down on her mm. and that she didn't have the same regard for her as she did for an adult. It was a negative view of children. And Pia, God bless her, she was filled with, you know, integrity, honesty, and sharing was coming from that place within and yet a lot of adults look at children and they think that they're trying to take advantage of them or being manipulative to get what they want, that there is all this negative perspective that we look at children with. And I don't even think we realize we're doing it because we don't really have an awareness of the negative view of children. Although we say things that indicate that when we look at their behavior, we look at it differently than we do in other adults. So the question I have now is, especially we're quote unquote coming out of COVID. Mm -hmm. I personally don't know if we'll ever come out a hundred percent, but we're trying, we're trying to yeah. make some differences, trying to get back to the new normal. And people are trying to make up for time they lost at work. They're working double time. They're trying to get everything back in place. Some things, those things are gone. You need to let it go. But their, their kids have become something on a to-do list to me. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like, I, I've got to make sure that Billy gets the soccer practice. It's in mm -hmm. my schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, how would you get somebody to understand that what you're saying, treat them like they would treat their an best adult. client, their best friend, an adult, and not just on the list, get in the car, let's go. What would you say to them? So great. I'd say, you know, take a breath right? Take a breath, pause, and remember why we had children to begin with. Mm. And all those things that are inconvenient, that get in the way of our to-do lists, that get in the way of us getting to the next thing and checking it off and being productive. If we imagine what joy there is in the fact that we got blessed to have children, not everyone who wants them gets them. And yet mm. we did. And so we have this beautiful relationship that we get to cultivate with our children. And I know for me, I've been one of those people who's been checking the list and, you know, just getting it done and like getting mm -hmm. everybody where they need to be on time and, you know, all of that stuff and going through the list. And I know I've had this shift and 
I even remember my daughter saying, because she was finishing her last semester at USC um, here on the sofa at this house because of COVID. Ooh. And her boyfriend was here too because he was finishing um, his first year of med school. And he was doing it um, here at this house as well. So it was so fun. We we got to have them around. And, and Pia would say things to me like, you know, mom, um, we're all going to have dinner now. Would you stop working and come join us? And I thought to myself, wow, you know, it's so true. We can get so caught up in our to-do list and being busy and productive and all that kind of stuff. And we might look back on our lives and say, oh my God, I missed that chance. I'm not going to miss those chances anymore. My daughter got in today. I'm going to celebrate, you know, it's International Women's Day. And my daughter just learned that she's been accepted into the PhD program in, cl uh, program in clinical psychology oh, at awesome. Northwestern University. And she also got word from CU Boulder that she was their number one, unanimously number one pick for their PhD program at CU Boulder. Wow. So now she's got this big decision to make where she's going to go. And I'm just celebrating and I'm going to go to Chicago and meet her this weekend. And I'm going to go amazing. to Northwestern and tour the campus next week. And then we're going to come back here and go up to Boulder. And I'm going to soak up every minute that I have. Well, you know, <laughs> Chicago's my home. You're going to love Northwest. It's it's an amazing <sighs> campus. It's an amazing campus. You're going to love it. Congratulations. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Born in Gary, Indiana, raised in Chicago. That's home for me. But oh, terrific. Let's, before people send me hate mail, let's tell them about your program and how they can connect <laughs> with you and you know what you're offering to help them because they've got you know a 60 year old going on 32 and they're going i'm i'm two inches away from locking them out the door i'm telling you i'm two <laughs> inches away so how it's how so do true. your programs work and how would they get connected with you for your program thank you yes so i have a 90-day parenting reset and the 90-day parenting reset is an opportunity for parents to reboot their relationship with their kids. And it's great. I have people in the training program who have kids who are actually as young as five mm -hmm. and as old as 27. So there's kind of right now, at least, and it's always changing because people come and go into the program. But essentially, what I offer is the COVID version was that I got to go online. And that's been wonderful because I have people who tune in from Dubai. I have people who tune in from Hong Kong and Los Angeles and Denver and all over the world. And we all come together on Monday nights when I do my coaching at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And then in between each Monday night coaching call, they go into the, the landing page where the 90 Day Parenting Reset training videos are. And that's where every week there are two or three training videos for half an hour 20 to 25 pages of reading and workbook exercises. And that's the self-study part. And then they come into the group calls and they get the coaching. And I work together with a, with a, a pediatrician as well. Mm. And then she'll meet with them separately for half an hour every month. And then they get some personal time with me as well. So it's that combination of one-on-one, -on -one, group coaching, self-study. And I think it's the best program I've ever had. And it really, it's one of the great birthing processes of COVID is that we're forced to do things that we wanted to do for years. For years, I had people say to me, you know, if this was online, my sister in New York could take it with me. If this oh. were online, people in other places in the world could do this with me. And in any event, for 20 years, I just kept doing it in person in Hong Kong, mostly in schools to parent communities that, you know, schools would invite me as the back to school night guest speaker. And I would talk about, okay, what are the disadvantages of using rewards and punishments? Because it's wow. what everybody does. Yeah. And I get to talk about, well, the problem with getting people to change their behavior because of what you're going to do to them is that it gets them focusing on this thing you're going to do, the goodie they're going to get, or the thing they're going to suffer, as opposed to really beginning to understand, like, what is it about my behavior that is upsetting to the other person? And how can I be considerate of other people's needs. So inadvertently, people are focusing their children's minds not on being considerate of others, but focusing even more on themselves and what am I going to get or happen to me? Amazing. 
I've got to have you come back on the show. I know you're going to do that. And we've got other projects coming up together. So we're going to, they're going to see us hang out a little bit. We're going to I hang out. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And everybody out there, if you guys want to find out more about Catherine, more about her programs, you know what to do. Go to Tigo Direct, type in Catherine, and you will see her profile. You will see a little box that you can send her a message. It'll get to her inbox and she'll reach back out to you and you can find out more about her programs and everything that she's doing and what stages she'll be on next because you just never know when you talk with Catherine. One day she's in Hong Kong. The next day she's in New York City, but she's amazing. Catherine, you are the best. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you so and much. This little bit Ego, of time with it's us. so great to be here. Love it. You're amazing. Thank you. You are too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.